Shared experiences and common history are what bind all communities together. It is no less true for the Jewish community in Petaluma. The cultural framework that contextualizes today's Jewish community in Petaluma can be understood by taking a look back at some of the events and experiences that have brought us to where we are today. Petaluma is a quaint and charming city established in the 1850s. Early on, it was primarily a ranching community with rolling hills and open land. It was a perfect place for a deeply committed Jewish community to settle. Based on the archive of minutes from the earliest meetings, we know that the Jewish community in Petaluma dates back to at least 1864, making it one of the oldest Jewish communities on the West Coast. With the onset of World War I, first-generation immigrants, mostly from Europe, arrived into Petaluma. My dad came to America in 1905. He came from Birbizan, at that time, I think, with Russia. And he came to San Francisco, where his sister was born. And he came to Petaluma as a poultry dealer in 1922, in partnership with a couple named Zeman. And so from that point, he stayed in Petaluma. The Jewish families who arrived in Petaluma during this time created the backbone of what would become a close-knit and vibrant community of passionate farmers. These immigrants grew their own food, raised cattle, and were pioneers in the poultry farming. They were also committed to preserving and honoring their deep-rooted heritage and culture. What they lacked, however, was a place to come together as a community. Is that the Jewish Community Center has been here since 1925. From that year on, B'nai Israel became the central meeting place for the community to congregate, providing space for both socializing and worshiping. Here, it, there was a shtetl here. It wasn't just a community. It was like being back in Europe again from my remembering that. Everybody was so good to everybody else there. And when my friend and I would go to the movies and we'd come walking back in here, any woman would come up and give us a uh, cake or took care of us and, and he welcomed us in. We felt very, very comfortable. My mother used to put on Passover seders in her house. Of course, all our family was there and we would invite these soldiers and their girlfriends or their wives and uh, they would come. I'd come with my parents and there were all kinds of functions going on. Uh, social functions for the most part. When I was 11, uh, these two, two brothers came over. It was Bill and Herb Savell. And they came to my uncle's ranch. And I kind of was in awe of them. They were two, three years older than me. But uh, Bill drove. <laughs> he drove a car. And I, I found that fascinating. In 1944, there were no young people here because they were either in the service or they were in the city or they were working. But in 1946, everybody came back after the war. This was September, and so it was a lot of fun. And that's when I said, okay, I'm gonna stay here. Community today is a really important facet of life, especially in American culture where community has broken down significantly over the past generations. And so we have an opportunity in Petaluma to teach our Jewish residents that being together is a source of strength and comfort, hope, celebration, laughter, all kinds of things that go with being part of a community. Early on, younger community members were active in such organizations as the AZA and BBG. Other organizations include B'nai B'rith, the Pioneer Woman, Pola Zion, Farbond, which was a labor Zionist order, and Hadassah, which was started in 1946. As the years passed, Jewish families continued to move to Petaluma. The poultry industry was historically the mainstay of the Jewish community economy. Well, the reason they came to Petaluma was to go into the chicken business, to make a living. I still remember 
uh, the, the daily grind of raising chickens. It was seven days a week, no days off, very hard to plan a vacation because the chickens had to be taken care of every single day. I grew up in Petaluma, so that was really the only life I knew. And I couldn't understand why everybody didn't think it was just a wonderful thing. My husband was from New York and he did not like it. <laughs> he was not very fond of chickens. And once I started working, I agreed with him. <laughs> In 1935, the farmers shifted away from eggs and introduced the colored fryers. With it, they also introduced new methods of production and labor-saving techniques. We arrived in 1937 from the Bronx, New York, and uh, we moved into town first, and then we moved out to the country. We raised chickens, uh, fryers, and also hens to sell eggs. Not all prospered, however, and many of the immigrants to Petaluma arrived in need of assistance during this time. We did help the uh, German refugees come to Petaluma. I mean, all of Petaluma helped them come and buy a ranch or settle or help financially. All the ranches of Petaluma chipped in for them. You know, they always helped each other to find a chicken ranch or whatever it was. And, uh, and again, people helped each other. Uh, during the war, this young man, Bob Brooks, was stationed out at Two Rock, and he was engaged to a girl from New Orleans, and they wanted to get married, and the girl could not afford a wedding. The community put on the wedding, a big, beautiful wedding. Little flower girl, everyone brought a gift. A couple had, that had a cabin on the Russian River gave them the cabin for their honeymoon. Bridesmaids, I mean, actually the men were the bridesmaids because there weren't enough girls and she didn't have any girlfriends here. She, she came from New Orleans. And uh, I kept in touch with them for years. World War II affected not only the economy, but also the cultural and daily life of the Jewish community in Petaluma. Many felt the effects of anti-Semitism during this war was when I went into the service. And I, I was involved in a single corps. I was a cryptographer at that time. And there was a captain who was an army captain who came from West Point, who came from the South Alabama, who was a real anti-Semite. And I could see everybody else was getting promotions, but I wasn't. They hear us very badly verbally. And there was also a place here in Petaluma up the street from us and they were all Nazis there. My father loved the United States, and he always told us how lucky we were to be here. And when I heard all this going on, it was very, very hurtful. But at the same time, none of us were ashamed of who we were. After World War II and up through the 1950s, another major population burst in Petaluma took place. There was a large influx of Holocaust survivors who were helped by the Jewish community when they arrived to rebuild their lives. While the war had been unbearably traumatic for these survivors who suffered at the hands of the Nazis, with the support of the Jewish community, these refugees rolled up their sleeves and began to learn the chicken ranching business. They were helped to get a place to live, something to eat, money to buy chickens, money for feed, all the things that were necessary for them. The fear of persecution did not end with the war. In the 1950s, there was also a great deal of concern with what was happening in this country domestically. The McCarthy era brought a new reign of terror, specifically to those who were pro-communist. Uh, the McCarthy era in Petaluma was really an ugly time. It was a very, very bad time in the community. There was a lot of dissension. There were a lot of people on either side of the issue. It divided the community more than anything I had ever seen. They were quite bitter about the whole thing because it was so... It was not just a, a family thing. It was spread out for the whole community. The Jewish folk course, they, they used to meet in this building 
but they when they were kicked out, they met at the Penn Grove Women's Club. No, they met at the high school, but they would have their rehearsals at the high school. The high school didn't think that they and were. Somebody went to the high school and yeah. told them they shouldn't allow them to be there. This was an incredibly painful time for the community, and it took years before the healing process even began. And I said, I really want my kids to go to Sunday school. She says, well, why don't you just take the kids and come? I said, oh, okay, I'm just going to do that. This was already several years later when the heat had sort of leveled off a little bit. And I walked in here with, my, with Debbie and Linda, my two oldest ones, and I, I was scared to death, and I walked in and somebody said to me, what are you doing here? And I said, well, I am Jewish, and I just kept right on walking with my kids. Today, while the wounds still run deep for some of those families who lived through this episode of the Center's history, the community has been able to find its way back to unity. Well, the joy I see is among our older families, they're now beginning to have hope for the future of our community. Because not only financially over the past couple of years within, with our economy and other things affecting our personal lives, uh, they have witnessed significant changes in Jewish life over the decades. And what they're seeing now gives great hope and that energy gives me joy. I would hope that in the future, B'nai Israel would continue to embody Jewish values and Jewish teachings. But I actually think it's going to be a very different institution as the years unfold. Because I think the patterns of Jewish life that my generation was used to and celebrated Jewish holidays with and uh, Jewish life in many ways with, uh, it's going to be changing. It may be more outdoors, it may be with different kinds of music, but as long as those values that we talk about that are time-tested throughout the centuries, as long as they hold true, then Jewish life will be Jewish life. As we celebrate 150 years of Jewish life in Petaluma, we now look forward to the next chapter in our story, one that will build on our rich and meaningful past.